and just enjoying the peace and quiet. I mean, just listen. And here comes the motorboat to ruin it. <laughs> Shut up, noisy bugger. What about ruining the fun? This is the new reality. Now while sailing with the solar panels up there. Now I'm not cooking on gas. Boiling water for me cup of tea on an induction hob. Well, it's only taken two and a half hours, but I'm finally going past the manacle mark. That's the cardinal that tells you to keep away from the rocks over there where all the men like to go fishing. Oh, and women, of course, I'm sure there are female fisher people out there, occasionally. <laughs> and, yes, Falmouth back there in the distance. And that yacht is catching up with me. And the wind has thankfully increased a little, so we've got about uh, 12, 13 knots of wind now. And we would be cracking along, um, but we're not. We're doing three and a half knots because we've got two and a half knots of tide against us. <laughs> um, but that's okay. That's what I was expecting. By the time I get to Lizard, the tide will have turned and will push me north. So. Well, at least, fingers crossed, it does depend on what time I get to Lizard, of course. I will need to get some sleep tonight, because I didn't sleep very well last night. Stressing myself out. <laughs> Stressing myself out over going on an adventure. How crazy. <laughs> Never said I was sane. Five o'clock, I'm bloody hungry. Having a little snack. And at Goujon's. Yes, I did say Adduk Goujon's. As does finest. Bang them in a tray. Bang them in the oven. So it works round here. Except I've got to take everything out of the oven to use the oven. In salad cream. Give it some sauce. Well, Tommy, the sandwich gets eaten. What? Proper eaten? Yes, Tommy, proper eaten. Well, we're just approaching Lizard. Still uh, a few miles away. The sun is getting low, it's 6 pm. Got about two and a half hours of daylight left. Would have been nice to have got round and started heading north before the wind changed, but that wasn't to be, so we'll be tucking our way into wind. Chilly now we're beating into wind. But at least we're uh, shifting a fair old rate. Five and a half knots at the moment. Still got the current against us. Alarm's just gone off. Every 15 minutes, what I do is I have a look under the sail. So there's nothing coming up. And then 
a look all around the horizon make a mental note of the positions of any vessels I've done that. I just check the course, zoom right in, make sure there's nothing there. Not far to go until we tack. Maybe another 15 minute snooze. And I check on here. See what shipping I can see on the AIS. Nothing to worry about, so I can go back to sleep. No, no. As you can see, made the tack to head back in towards England. The wind is coming from exactly the wrong direction. It's going to be a real slog to get anywhere. I think I might end up stopping the night at Newlyn or somewhere, depending on what time I get there. Probably not before dark. So this is the difference wind against tide makes. Those lovely calm seas from earlier and now a confused mess. And the ride is certainly not as comfortable as it was. Sit rep is um, 11 miles from Newlyn and the wind has died and not only that it's now blowing directly from the direction of Newlyn so uh, right now uh, if I was going to go in an anchor it's going to take me around five or six hours to get there not ideal which means I'll probably be better off just keeping going and trying to snatch some sleep on the way the wind's going to be this light all night and it's going to squirrel around and tomorrow morning at about six it should start to fill in from the south southeast see what happens maybe there'll be a blast of wind all of a sudden and i'll be in newland in an hour and a half <laughs> not gonna happen <laughs> but what a lovely night Well, the wind has completely gone. I'm six miles south of Mausel, and the next job is to put both of the sails away, turn the autopilot off, and um, just drift with the current because the sails at the moment are just flogging themselves to death, as you can probably hear. most observant of you may have noticed that I'm motoring. Yes, I got fed up of going backwards at two knots the way I'd come. So, 4am this morning, I put the engine on. Things right before dawn. I'm 
Okay, fix that. Where the forecast has changed. So plans have changed. The wind is going to be no more than two or three knots all day today until this evening when it picks up and then blows up to 30 knots overnight and into tomorrow. So what I've decided to do is to pot around to St Ives, anchor up there out the way, sit through the worst of the bad weather and then as that dies down possibly Wednesday afternoon we'll see how it goes uh, leave and head north so we're just passing Land's End over there and these islands here I believe the lighthouse is called the Mayneck Lighthouse But apparently there's a, an anchorage in amongst these rocks here. I've just got to say, nope. <laughs> that would have to be one seriously quiet day on the Atlantic. something about this coastline it's very uniquely Cornish I mean all the mines studded along the cliffs kind of help to identify it but it's stunningly rugged and beautiful especially on a day like this hate motoring, really with a passion, hate motoring, but has to be done today, there is no wind, and well, little wind there is, all two knots of it is right on the nose anyway, um, and there's a knot and a half of current that's, <laughs> there's no way I'd be sailing against that, even, even if I had five knots of wind. So, motoring it is, got uh, about three hours to go till I get to St Ives and uh, I'm going to find a nice sheltered spot on the eastern side of the bay, shelter from the, the worst of the easterly wind that's going to come in, just can't get enough of days like this though. not Ireland. This is St Ives Bay and we're heading to the east side of the bay. So the forecasted Gale Force 8 is just just beginning to get going really. Um, it's going to be a few hours yet before it reaches its peak but I just wanted to show you this. It's the simple things in life that give me so much pleasure and saving an absolute fortune also gives me a lot of pleasure when it comes to anything boaty you can guarantee they'll put a naught or two on the end of the number anyway so what we've got is with two ipads i can see my anchor alarm anchor alarm down here look. and i've got the solar and my wind instruments on here so i can see exactly what's happening with the solar power coming in what's happening with the wind, the depth, and my anchor. Excellent. Not at all worried about the potential of Force 8, Force 9, uh, even if the Met Office do get it really, really wrong, Force 10. Um, where I am here, all right, let me show you where I am here. So, if I do get blown anywhere, 
it's that direction. Not an awful lot to hit out there. There were no lobster pots when I came in, so not worried about it at all. Plus, for about two miles in that direction, it's 18 meters deep and sand. Not a problem. Um, gonna be a lot of wind noise in a second. What's life like on anchor when the wind's blowing? There we are. We've had 38 knots coming down a little bit at the moment. High tide as well. High tide makes uh, things a little bit more bouncy because the water's deeper, so you get bigger waves build up. But life on board in a storm on anchor consists of well work been working all morning and uh, washing up and um, chicken curry on the go cooking cooking that now while the uh, solar's coming in uh, it's drawing 500 watts and that bubbling away and I've got well pretty much 500 watts coming in from the solar so that's costing absolutely nothing right now it's it's a bit rocky and rolly <laughs> gotta say loving it it's, uh, just being out here again is well it's what I'm meant to be doing it's what it is it's what I'm meant to be doing Everything's howling. I've been round, went round last night, in the middle of the night, basically finding everything that made a noise and stopping it making a noise. <laughs> so that was that was my, I think that was at about two in the morning. I went to sleep probably uh, yesterday afternoon at some point, about three o'clock, I think and uh, woke up around two as the wind was just starting to pick up went back to bed woke up about eight o'clock this morning that was my <laughs> recovery sleep from the previous two nights of having next to no sleep at all as you can see i'm the only boat here challenger four was here last night they had some problems and came in to do some repairs. They've gone now. Great thing about sailing this early in the season is there's no one else around. <laughs> right, engine checks are done. The wind has finally calmed down. Time to go. Quite a bit later than planned. The weather models were extremely inaccurate as to when the wind would begin to die down so it's nearly well it's it's gone noon and the weather models were saying it was going to be around 6 a.m so I'm glad i didn't get up really early <laughs> uh, it was such a shit night i didn't get much sleep so uh, switched the alarm off and just allowed myself to wake up naturally this morning time to get the foul weather gear on and let's get going and we're away, running dead down wind, almost due north, and it's much calmer now. <laughs> if the rain holds off, this is going to be a really nice gentle day. 5.8, 6 knots, heading out into the Irish Sea, 
I'll decide later on where it is I want to go when I've got a good 24 hours before I need to worry about it. We've cleared the yellow boys that are out in the Bristol Channel here, so I've been able to change my course a little bit more westward and get both sails flying again. One thing I've not done before, on video at least, is talked about how I got here. And why am I doing this? I guess the only place to start really is I had a, a normal grey cardboard box life just like everyone else. I went to work in the morning, I got home late in the evening, had something to eat, went to bed, got up early the next morning and did it all over again. I had two two week holidays a year. Problem is I've always had a terrible wanderlust. Always wanted to travel and a two week holiday for me wasn't even a taster. I was desperate to get out and see the world. Anyway, there was a period where over a couple of years I lost a number of friends and family members, mostly to cancer. Some died very suddenly and unexpectedly, including people younger than me. And when my father was diagnosed with cancer, just after he retired, kind of brought it all home and shortly after that the stresses of all of that and work got too much for me and I ended up having a breakdown. I was off work for over six months and it was something of an epiphany for me. I had health problems as well as mental problems. It all kind of comes home at a time like that. And eventually that led to the breakdown in my marriage. And me moving to the south coast where I could sail much more often. I met a absolutely fantastic lady, Linny, fell head over heels in love. So head over heels when it ended horribly. I've been pretty much unable to get over it completely, even today. But with every passing season, it fades a little. So I guess, in a sense, I've been running away all those years, living in a grey cardboard box, escaping in hobbies and anything I could and this is kind of the ultimate running away but with a purpose I'm determined not to reach a point in my life where I can't do things and end up dying with the regret of what I should have done what I needed to do but didn't so that's why I'm out here that's why I'm exploring Travelling, going places, seeing where the wind takes me. I discovered some absolutely amazing spots completely by accident last year. And I'm sure there'll be way more of that this year. I've just got to get to Norway. <laughs> That's the challenge. And then, after Norway, back to Cornwall. And from there, who knows? Maybe turn right when the butter melts, head across to Barbados and see where I go from there. The world is my oyster. The only thing I'm missing is company. I've met some lovely ladies over the last few years, but none of them in a position to be able to do what I'm doing. It would be absolutely amazing to meet someone and fall in love that loved sailing and was free to come away and just keep going.
with no actual goal in mind, just travel. Extremely unlikely though. I have more chance of winning the lottery, so I'll just buy my lottery tickets and be happy with that. <laughs> Guys, I'm pretty certain she's not out there. Anyway, making good progress. Time for a cup of tea. Well, that was fun. I was making a cup of tea and the wind went from 10 knots to 25 knots. <laughs> Forcing me to dash back up here and stick a reef in very quickly. Nothing quite like reefing under pressure. And now I'm a bit warm. Christ. Oh, but it's getting up out here. Glad I didn't leave earlier. My wind was absolutely howling this morning. 30 knots gusting in the 40s. So imagine what it would have been like out here then. Still making good speed, seven, seven and a half knots. Hopefully it uh, just stays like this. Maybe without the rain, that'd be nice. It's not a great advert really, is it? <laughs> You've really got to like being out in the weather. on a rainy day. Oh well, <laughs> dolphins any time will do me. Conditions are getting worse. Waves are now three meters. Wind is 30 knots. Absolutely not forecast by the Met Office. Thank you very much again guys. And I'm now running on a fully reefed main only. Quite something. Because of the conditions, I've decided to head towards Milford Haven, which is still another 12 hours away. But uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to push myself to go all night and into the next day in this. So I'll arrive at Dale Bay and anchor sometime in the night. Don't think I'll be getting much sleep during the night tonight. I'll correct that. Don't think I'll be getting any sleep during the night tonight. I've just had the pleasure of listening to the latest Met Office forecast issued at 1800, which is now two hours ago. And apparently the wind is two to four out here and the sea state is slight or moderate, occasionally smooth. I'd really like to get them out here and show them how accurate their forecasts are. Honestly, <clears throat> that's what I was expecting when I left. I was supposed to be potentially uh, four to six, maybe a seven when I set off for uh, three hours and then it was supposed to be two to four. 
I don't mind. It's been fun. Um, where are we? We're at 8 p.m. It's going to be going dark in about half an hour. I'm going to leave just the reefed mainsail up overnight. The wind has dropped ever so slightly now. It's blowing around 20. Um, so we're gradually slowing down a little bit, doing about five or six knots now. I don't need to go too fast though, otherwise I'll be arriving in um, Milford Haven in the dark, which I'd rather not, but not the end of the world if I do. Um, hopefully the wind dies down a little bit during the night, as the Met Office said it already has. And um, we'll slow down a little bit so I can arrive as the sun comes up. That's the rough plan anyway. We'll see what actually happens. I keep saying that, we'll see what actually happens. <sighs> Got to stop doing it. So there won't be any sleeping tonight. to 28 knots now. Still running with just the reefed mainsail. The waves are still 3 metres but the wavelength has dropped to no more than a couple of seconds. I think coming groups of 3 or 4 and the rolling is horrific. <laughs> Not a comfortable night. At least every now and then the moon comes signs of light in the sky, just about. Well somewhere over there is Milford Haven. About seven miles away. The wind's come down, the waves have come down as well. About two metres. Oh, it's been rolly all night. Before I go, I'd just like to give a very fond thank you to Tom Hawkins for his donation on Kofi. And best of luck with the boat buying, mate. And I'd like to thank Chris Morgan for his purchase of a t-shirt in my shop. First one sold. Well, other than to myself, of course. Um, thank you very much, mate. I will see you soon, I hope. Peace and fair winds.